Hey everyone, it's Victoria with Nutrition by Victoria and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be reviewing Sane Vlot's What I Eat in a Week No Sugar Challenge. She just came out with this video on February 18th and it's had 161,000 views already. So it's been out for a week and she has 1.5 million subscribers. So she's reaching a lot of people with her no sugar message. <clears throat> She's also selling a meal plan right now uh, of this, um, you know, seven day uh, meal plan thing. It looks like there's an annual membership. Maybe she she partnered with Soul Sync Body. So let's see if what Sane is promoting is actually healthy. <clears throat> and... I decided to do a seven day no sugar challenge. You guys already see, I'm going to film what I eat this week. Max and I have been doing a lot of dinners. We've been like, I don't know if it's eating out, but we're just eating so much sugar. I also, my skin breaking out. My skin is breaking. Okay, skin breakouts are not specific to sugar. Actually, a lot of skincare products contain sugar uh, because they're great for the skin. And sugar is good for your body as long as you don't have insulin resistance. So if you're having this kind of reaction from eating sugar, you can bet your bottom dollar that you are insulin resistant. So let's find out what she's eating to see if that is the case breaking out like freaking crazy it's all okay so let's see what she's eating anyway for today we have on the menu a blueberry a smoothie okay i'm not gonna play the music here so she's making a smoothie we got blueberries half a cup half an avocado got a cup of almond milk vanilla, cinnamon, and about a tablespoon of almond butter and a scoop of vanilla protein. Now I actually calculated this smoothie. It came out to <clears throat> about 400 calories and I actually totaled this day too and put it all in a chronometer. So we're going to take a look at that next after we get through this day one of her meal plan. That's actually a really pretty color. Now she does um, put in the description what um protein that she uses or suggests so there's a raw organic protein powder a clean lean protein powder and a whey protein powder and i just want to show this quick video because uh, whey is a product of the dairy industry it's actually a byproduct of milk production it was originally a waste product and then you know as uh, companies wanted to figure out something to do with it, they packaged it up and sell it as a um, very highly profitable and marketable um, supplement for athletes or uh, supermodels or whoever, because uh, uh, Sane uh, did work for Victoria's Secret at one time. I'm not sure if she's still modeling, but that's how she got her name out there. But let's see. Um, uh, the effects of dairy because she does include dairy in this meal plan too. Suggest it's the animal protein boosting the levels of a cancer promoting growth hormone called IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor one. If you look at 28 studies. Okay, so that just said, and I don't know what's going on with my camera, um, concentrate, increased circulating concentrations of insulin-like growth factor one or IGF-1 with intake of milk and dairy products. Um, so that it, so increased IGF-1 was reported with the intake of milk and dairy products. Again, whey is a dairy product and it has been shown in clinical studies to raise IGF-1, uh, which uh, promotes insulin resistance and it also promotes um, uh, cancer growth in the body as well. So you wanna ditch that. I know that she does talk here real briefly about um, some of these are plant proteins, but you don't even need to add this kind of stuff to your, to your smoothie. One, it needs more fruit Two, cut the fat. If you don't want to be insulin resistant and three, add some sugar that helps with satiety, um, and, uh, energy production. All of our cells in the human body run on sugar and we need enough every day to keep our body, um, healthy and energized and our cellular metabolism 
running efficiently. And it um, sugar and fruit and carbohydrates, <clears throat> they all promote insulin sensitivity when the diet is low in fat. Okay. Let's see what she's having for lunch. All right. Prep queen today. I got some chickpeas. Make sure to rinse them off. Some veggie, celery, red bell pepper, fresh dill. You really need fresh dill. And the original recipe actually has veganese in there, but there's also sugar in the veganese. So we're going to use some. Veganese is also high in fat. I believe <coughs> uh, there are um like fat free vegan mayonnaise options if you want to recreate this chickpea mash that she's about to make. Um, but she uses a dairy option. So Sane, you need to do your research on dairy products and use nutritionfacts.org. Yeah, so she's going to use Greek yogurt in this recipe. We're going to start cutting up some veggies, uh, cucumbers, red bell pepper, and... I got to take the music out. Okay, so she got her chickpeas, got a tablespoon of Greek full-fat yogurt. I think that's mustard. <coughs> Big piece of sourdough bread, all the veggies, and her chickpea mash. And this is all she's eating for lunch, just this piece of toast. So she had um, about a 400-calorie smoothie for lunch, or I mean for breakfast, and now this like 400-calorie um, spread for lunch. <clears throat> okay. Let's see... I would be so hungry. <laughs> okay, here's the caffeine because she hasn't eaten enough. With some probably heavy whipping cream, two tablespoons. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And now she's on to dinner. Okay. Appetizing. I did adjust the recipe a little bit because so she has a shrimp. Kind of this is a shrimp um red curry. It looks like with tomato and zucchini. Any spice because and she doesn't share the whole recipe here either. So, um, you I kind of guesstimated on chronometer how many calories um this ended up being. My stomach gets very upset. That's <laughs> delicious. And then I also make some rice for- All right, we got some white rice in there. She needs those carbs. Everyone who's thinking about getting few kitchen tools, you should get a food processor and a rice maker. It is- I agree. Food processor and a rice cooker. You definitely need um, at least a blender and a rice cooker to be successful on uh, any kind of a healthy diet. Okay, so let's see what her serving portion looks like. Oh, it's real quick. Okay, so this is what she's eating for dinner. It looks like one to maybe one and a half cups of white rice. It depends on how big this bowl is. Um, I'm not sure, but you can check out the size of her hand with this bowl. I think it's pretty small. Okay, so that was day one. I'll, I'm going to go over a little bit more of what's in this meal plan, but the whole video is 30 minutes, so I really don't want this video to be that long. So we're going to go to chronometer and show what her diet looked like for the day. <coughs> okay, now something that I missed is I saw she had some cucumber in her little chickpea sandwich, so I'm going to add that real quick. Um, and it was like a really small amount. Okay. All right. But that at least boosts her calorie intake. Oh my gosh. So her calorie intake for that day was about 1200 calories. <coughs> oh my goodness. I have like a dry throat. Um, her fat intake, almost 50 grams, 47 grams. So her macronutrient ratios look like 34% fat, 50% uh, carbs, 15% protein. Um, so she just met her protein needs as a woman. The RDA for protein for a woman is 46 grams a day. Um, but her calorie intake is so low. That's why she's using protein powder. Um, that's why she's eating animal products, um, because her calorie intake is so low that she needs to, 
uh, get in those really dense sources of protein and fat in order to meet just a fraction of her calorie needs. And when it comes to insulin resistance, I just want to show you guys uh, my coaching program, like a part of it. <clears throat> there we go. This is my um, section on insulin resistance and factors that increase insulin resistance include high intake of dietary fat and low calorie diets, fasting or starvation. Um, there is a reason why low calorie diets trigger um, insulin resistance. It has to do with uh, cortisol being chronically elevated, uh, which, and low levels of circulating leptin in the blood, uh, the combination creates insulin resistance so that the body can preserve its fat stores, um, in times of famine or low calorie intake, and then combining a low calorie diet with a diet that's high in dietary fat, which I would say a diet that's over 30% fat is definitely a high fat diet. Um, that's a double whammy for insulin resistance. And that's why Sane is having the reactions that she is to sugar. Now, if you want to reverse your insulin resistance, this is me and I'm about, um, oh yeah, I wanted to talk about Sane's measurements too. <clears throat> so she is 5'11 and about 128 pounds. That puts her BMI uh, underweight. Uh, 17.9 BMI. And I am um, six foot tall. And I weigh 145 pounds. So I have a BMI that's normal weight, but it's on the lower end of 19.7. This is what I look like. Hey guys, it's Victoria with Nutrition by Victoria. And it's and this is how much I eat a day. So this is my chronometer from yesterday. I'm sorry, my video keeps going out. <laughs> um, I consumed uh, almost 4,000 calories yesterday of 93% carbs, 2% fat, 5% protein. Met all my protein needs of, and it's more than Sane's, uh, 57 grams and eight grams of fat. So I can eat an unlimited amount of sugar and carbohydrates and not have the same symptoms that Sane is having. I can maintain a lean body weight that is also within the healthy BMI range. And also I didn't show this on Sane's chronometer, but my chronometer shows that I'm meeting the majority of my nutrient needs just with my diet. No supplementation included here. This is just food. And if we check out Sane's, <clears throat> she's barely meeting the majority of her nutrient requirements. All of her B vitamins are low. And she's also low in iron. So I wouldn't be just surprised if um, she's actually iron deficient anemic. Yeah. So I'm able to eat as much as I want and have really great um, insulin sensitivity, great blood work, maintain a lean body weight and um, yeah, <coughs> eat as much sugar as I want. Uh, what you really should do if you are <laughs> looking to improve your health and lose weight um, is go on a no fat challenge, not a no sugar challenge. Um, when you restrict the fat intake of your diet, then you can eat as much carbohydrate calories as you want. Okay. Let's just, um, look at a few more of her meals here. This is getting into day two and she is making eggs for breakfast. Two eggs here. And I'm going to actually uh, talk about eggs in a minute. Okay, so this is what her breakfast looks like. Like, where where's the fruit? Okay, we got a piece of bread, which let's get into. <clears throat> I want to show you guys glycemic index, right? 
So glycemic index is basically how much sugar is in a food and its impact on your blood sugar levels. So the glycemic index of sugar is 58. Anything over 70 is pretty high in the glycemic index, but this is table sugar. It's not high in the glycemic index. It's moderate. <clears throat> okay. And then we got bread, uh, sourdough bread. Fifty-four. So it's in the same category as sugar. And uh, let's do banana. Uh, so banana actually has a better glycemic index than the bread. So why is she not eating like fruit? Fruit in general is pretty low to moderate on the glycemic index. Thirty-nine for an apple. But I will tell you, after reviewing all of her, um, you know, what I eat in a day uh, for these seven days, very, I think she only has like two servings of fruit, like sweet fruit the entire time. 46 for grapes. <clears throat> so this meal here actually promotes insulin resistance, the fat and protein content of the eggs, the fat content of the avocado. In total, this is about between 300 and 400 calories, and that seems to be um, the theme for her breakfast, like in terms of calorie content, is about 400 calories for breakfast, 400 calories for lunch, 400 calories for dinner. Okay. Let's see. Okay, here's her lunch. Kind of with very like the clean ingredients, so I just have veggies. The veggies look good. I like to use those kind of veggies minus avocado and spring rolls. And then we're having some wraps. So she's making wraps. You can use rice paper wraps and put those veggies in with some rice or rice noodles, and it makes for a really tasty dish. Here and then I made for protein some eggs with it. So, oh boy, more eggs. Okay, so we need to watch this video on eggs real quick. Sane needs to see this too, so hopefully, she sees this video. Harvard Nurses Health Study found that the daily consumption of the amount of cholesterol found in just a single egg appeared to cut a woman's life short as much as smoking 25,000 cigarettes five cigarettes a day for 15 years. Following up on that research, a study in the journal Atherosclerosis found that just three eggs or more a week was associated with a significant increase in artery-clogging plaque buildup in, the, in people's carotid arteries going to their brain, a strong predictor of stroke, heart attack, and death. Okay, so Sane, uh, you need to check this out. Like this study shows that eggs could should come with a warning label on them just like cigarettes, okay? This is not healthy. This is not health promoting. This is disease promoting. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Sometimes we have to be. Okay. She doesn't even show the lunch here. She starts getting into her meal plan and then here's dinner. And then I will heat up. Okay. She's making like a, uh, some kind of a soup here or noodle dish. Um, and she's starting with oil. You don't need oil to saute okay. veggies, which is what she's doing here is sauteing vegetables. Just use water with a non good nonstick pot, which this is a good nonstick pot. You don't need the oil. The oil creates insulin resistance. Otherwise, I think this meal would be pretty healthy. It's like a miso soup thing. And she ends up adding rice noodles and maybe tofu to it, you know, but still like these bowls, you know, they're like a decent size, but it's a pretty low calorie density dish. So, you know, again, total calorie intake for this meal is probably like 400, 500 putting her again. I'd say her total calorie intake for this entire meal plan is between 1200 to 1500 calories a day, which is too low for an adult woman. An adult woman needs about 2400 calories a day. This is why she's underweight. This is why she's able to like be a supermodel too, because they want you to have that really svelte <coughs> look to you. 
Um, and she is starving herself in order to maintain that. Okay, so now we're getting into another breakfast here of porridge. And it looks like it's about 150 calories of oatmeal, cooked oatmeal. Okay, we got coconut, hemp seeds, and almond butter. There's no fruit. Her potassium intake is going to be really low too. Vitamin C, like you need these nutrients in order to be healthy. This is a insulin resistance promoting diet. It's low carb too. It's like double whammy for, for in, uh, creating insulin resistance. If she doesn't continue to starve herself like this by eating this low calorie, she's going to gain weight and a lot. Metabolic debt collector is coming for her. <laughs> Okay, that's what she's having for breakfast. Okay, and she's having the chickpea spread again for her lunch this day. And I want to listen to this chat with you guys. I want to check in quickly with you guys. We're now on day three of the challenge. And I am definitely feeling I'm having a little bit of sugar cravings. I also just made a matcha nuts. I don't know if it's like I'm actually craving sugar or if it's for me such a habit to just have something sweet after lunch or dinner. Um, and Okay. She said, I'm having sugar cravings. So I'm having a matcha tea and nuts. <clears throat> Matcha teas, caffeine. She also adds the heavy cream to it. High fat. Nuts, high fat. Where are the carbs? Carbohydrates are low in calorie density too. Fruits, vegetables, starches, they're low calories. They fill you up. They give you the carbs you need and you can't overeat on them. And then you can add sugar to even help with the sugar cravings. But she is starving herself. That's why she's feeling this way. Lately, it's been a lot in the evening, <laughs> but it's been a lot in the evening because she's hungry. She's only eating 1200 calories a day and she's not meeting her carbohydrate needs. Uh, yeah, I wanted to give you guys some tips and tricks for when you're having these sugar cravings, but I also really want to make clear that it is so important to be kind to yourself. So some tips and tricks that can make a really big difference and tools that can help you is number one is to stay hydrated. Okay. These tips that she's going to go over are just general health tips. They don't help with sugar cravings. The only thing that helps with sugar cravings is giving into them and eating your sugar, eating your carbohydrates, but keeping your dietary fat low. Okay. What's she going to talk about next? That is my number one. Number two, prioritize sleep. Okay. okay, let's just listen to what she has to say about sleep. I definitely agree with this one as well. You need to get your sleep in or else you are going to promote insulin resistance in your body because not enough sleep uh, creates elevated cortisol levels. It disrupts your circadian um, rhythm cycle, and it all just promotes insulin resistance. I think it is so important because when you have a lack of sleep, you actually can create like a hormonal imbalance and messes up with your like insulin. So you, but she, it, I mean, what she's saying is correct, but she is disrupting her own insulin by not eating enough carbohydrates. You will create these like sugar cravings when you are feeling super tired. I always, okay. I also want to bring up. Percival Hemsworth and his work. <clears throat> okay, so H.P. Hemsworth, um, he uh, published the dietetic factors influencing the glucose tolerance and the activity of insulin. He was the father of, he discovered insulin resistance versus insulin sensitivity. Um, this is uh, from the National Library of Medicine. So this is peer-reviewed clinical research um, that is utilized today. And right here at the very beginning of the article, uh, he says, it is now established that the sugar tolerance is impaired by starvation or the taking of diets with a high content of fat, 
whilst it is improved by taking diets containing an excess of carbohydrate. Okay, proof is in the pudding right there. All right, let's get back to the video. So Sane would improve her insulin uh, sensitivity by increasing her carbohydrate content of her diet and decreasing the fat content of her diet and eating a sufficient amount of calories, which for her is going to look like about double what she's currently eating, at least 2,400 calories a day for an adult female. I noticed that immediately. When I don't sleep enough. Okay. I've had on my mind, and it was a quote that I saw where... All right, I want to wrap this video up here just because it's starting to get long. Here we go, another insulin resistance promoting meal. At least we got some white rice, but these are just oily vegetables. <coughs> and then the chicken is insulin resistant promoting as well, uh, but low calories. So she is like flying under the radar here with her weight <laughs> and... Uh, trying to manage her blood sugar. Like this is standard dietetic practice, low carb, low calorie diet to manage insulin. But I want to re rewind this real quick because she is like, I'm so hungry, right? Okay, let's listen to that. Very, very important. Like I don't want this to like stress you out. Or... It is going to stress you out because it doesn't contain enough calories or carbohydrates. And you need enough calories and carbohydrates in your diet every day to maintain normal cortisol levels and to uh, be able to handle stress so that you're not constantly in fight or flight and having elevated cortisol levels, which promotes insulin resistance. Or, you know, it shouldn't. And also, even if we have sometimes setbacks, it's okay. You can be kind to yourself. Um, it's totally Yeah, be kind to yourself by eating more carbs. <laughs> anyway, I hope these tips help. I'm going to make some dinner soon. It's 3.30 in the afternoon and she's making dinner soon because she's hungry. And I'll see you there. Okay, it is dinner time. I like to have an early dinner right now because I'm hungry. She's crashing. She's experiencing a bonk. <laughs> um, it's basically when you run out of carbohydrates and you start uh, really burning protein mainly for fuel when you hit gluconeogenesis and then ketosis, which she's not in ketosis. The diet she's eating is promoting gluconeogenesis where her body's constantly having to create glucose from protein or fat. And when uh, you hit that first stage of gluconeogenesis, you're actually utilizing, well, first glycogen stores, but second protein. So she's actually burning stored protein at the expense of her metabolic rate and her muscle in order to um, uh, have enough uh, blood sugar uh, to maintain normal blood sugar levels. Ketosis is what you hit after you've run out of glycogen and you've burned enough protein, your body starts converting more fat uh, to, well, glucose, but then it actually just starts ketosis where you're not even converting that fat to um, glucose anymore. You're bypassing that pro uh, process and you're just um, uh, creating ketone byproducts from burning fatty acids. And that uh, creates a toxic situation in the blood and it's just none of it's good it's all are just uh, backup mechanisms for surviving uh starvation situations so it's good but we don't want to be utilizing them we want to get in enough carbohydrate calories every day so that <coughs> our metabolic rate can stay high and our hormone levels can stay normal i wouldn't be surprised if her estrogen's really low cortisol's high she's got insulin resistance um, so her body is primed for fat storage, but because she doesn't have enough coming in <coughs> of calories, um, she's going to be burning fat stores, protein and fat stores in order to compensate for uh, the lack of carbohydrate in her diet. But if she was to start eating more calories, those calories would get stored as fat. So I am going to make, I grab all the recipes. We're going to make like a bowl i'm going to use grilled chicken but feel free to use tofu yeah so we just looked at that bowl 
So she, you know, incorporates healthy stuff, but there's not enough fruit. Okay, now we're, she's still hungry, so she's going to have dessert today. Here, this will definitely taste better with couscous, like the original recipe, but. Okay. I have some Greek yogurt, and then I'm going to. Everybody notice full fat Greek yogurt, which dairy still contains sugar too, by the way. Mm. really really delicious it's evening and we're hungry so we're doing a little snack i have some Greek she's hungry still because her diet is so low in calories and so high in fat and none of carbohydrates whole milk greek yogurt this stuff is super high in fat you guys don't eat it if you want to have better insulin sensitivity greek yogurt and then i'm going to put some of this granola cereal it's basically and this is high fat too. The cassava is a starch, coconut fat, coconut oil fat. And that at some point in the video, she says coconut oil helps with satiety. That is such like a circulating mainstream myth. We just made with cassava, coconut, coconut oil, Himalaya salt. So there's absolutely zero sugar in here. You just put this more in. Zero sugar, high fat. Again, let's go back to this. <laughs> It is now established that the sugar tolerance is impaired by starvation or the taking of diets with a high content of fat, whilst it is improved by taking diets containing an excess of carbohydrate. <laughs> She's doing it wrong. I feel like the crunch, honestly. And then I'll probably put some cinnamon on top. Oh, I got to take the music out. Okay, watch too. Like this, this part got me because she's just so hungry that like cereal's falling off the plate, and she just can't wait to eat this high fat dessert. She is hungry. Okay, so I'm not. We're not gonna watch any more of this. Oh, let's watch this smoothie though real quick. It's so nasty because it's just like high fat smoothie. Spinach, half an avocado, too generous. When did people start putting avocados in smoothies? Like I I don't like avocados at all, but it's just nasty. <clears throat> Tablespoons of cacao powder. Cacao's super high in caffeine. Oh, there's the protein powder. Hopefully it's plant-based. Reduce the cancer risk. Oh, yeah, this is what she's going to say about coconut oil. Tablespoons of cacao powder. It's a lot of cacao, too. One scoop of vanilla protein powder. One teaspoon of coconut oil. This will help you keep it cool longer. Like, where does that even come from? How does oil keep you full longer? It's because it's a dense source of calories, and her diet is so low in calories that she's just desperate for these fats. And then fats, like, uh, interrupt our signaling in digestion, like, to tell the body that's full because it's so, like, this is so high in fat content that it, like, kind of paralyzes the digestive tract um it and this is actually clinically proven i've had gastroparesis and i'm supposed to eat a very low fat diet because fat will paralyze uh the gi tract so it won't um, allow it to move so it really really slows down digestion digestive functioning so anybody with a digestive order disorder is supposed to eat a low fat diet uh to promote um normal bowel functioning and movement a generous so if it stays in the stomach longer then she's going to be fuller for longer but like i said her blood levels of leptin are going to be really low which is why she's going to be like hungry hangry the majority of the time first amount of cinnamon this will get the flavor okay we get the idea this is just so such a nasty smoothie oh she added Unsweetened almond milk that's got like 30 calories per cup. This just comes out looking <laughs> like baby poop. <clears throat> and I'm sure it tastes horrible, but when you don't eat 
enough carbohydrates, your taste buds kind of like adapt. So, and she's so hungry that even like she won't return this guy's kiss because she's just so hungry. Oh, and here's her matcha because she's like, crap, I'm still hungry. So I'm going to drink this caffeine to give me energy. Oh, there's still music playing. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> And then she has leftovers for lunch, which her dinner the night before was pretty, like, spare. So I'm surprised that she even has food, like, left over. <laughs> but she doesn't eat a lot, you know? She eats the amount of food that my four-year-old eats, like, 1,200 calories in a day. Okay. So I want to get to the very end of this video when she talks about how her program has been uh, approved by a dietitian. Cabbage, slaw, fish. Again, high protein, high fat, low carb dinner. This is the last dinner of her um, seven day meal plan. And then no color. So delicious. All right. Monday today, and I was going to vlog the last day of the challenge, but Max and I need to head out out of LA today, so I did want to take a little moment and close out the video and kind of talk about the shifts in my body, results, how I'm feeling about the challenge, all of that. So I have been in the last few days waking up with so much energy. I feel my skin has been cleared up a lot. Her skin does look better, but... Um, this is the standard diet, low calorie, low carb diet that, um, registered dietitians use in order to help somebody manage diabetes. It doesn't fix the problem though, but it does, um, decrease the symptoms. So that is what she's experiencing is like symptom relief because she took the sugar out, but she's still insulin resistant. <clears throat> like I started to have like kind of breakouts I just feel way more energized I actually doubt that because there's been a lot of times through this video where uh she has been talking about the sugar cravings and being hungry so I think that that's just the seller product is making this claim right now throughout the whole day like it is crazy how she's also using caffeine she shows herself having caffeine at least once a day, um, she may be having it twice a day. But I have just personally felt any kind of like, you know, changes. If you want to try out the exact seven day no sugar challenge that I do, then you can find it on Sourcing Body. All these recipes are created to still satisfy your body. They will make sure you get all the nutrients you need. They're all ready. But you don't get all the nutrients you need. Okay. Day one, let's go back to it. Okay. 1200 calories, 42% iron, 77% vitamin A, <clears throat> low in all the B vitamins, vitamin D, that's something she should be supplementing. Low iron, low magnesium, not enough potassium my kids are starting to get crazy so i gotta wrap this up okay did you guys get that registered dietitian approved really a registered dietitian approved a diet that's not high enough in potassium or iron for a female and it's 1200 calories that person should lose their credentials i'm sorry but i have a master's of science in human nutrition and that dietitian does not have enough education to be um, creating diet plans uh, that encourage starvation. Like it's it's wrong. Changes. If you want to try out the exact seven day no sugar challenge that I did, then you can find it on Sourcing Coffee. All of these recipes are created to still satisfy your body. They will make sure you get all the nutrients you need. They're all registered dietitian approved. This. Yeah, again, let's go back to it. Registered dietitian approved a 1200 calorie diet for a female, and it 
just meets protein needs. It's super high in fat and it's lacking in a lot of nutrients. Okay. That is it for this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it again. Like this is how much I'm eating a day, staying lean as can be. Okay. And eating all I care for while meeting all my nutrient requirements. Okay. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below. If you'd like to check out my coaching, uh, there was a link in the description box of the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.